Okay, so let's have a quick look at titration of acid-base solutions. Why do we titrate? We use a titration to determine the concentration of an acid or a base experimentally. So like you can tie this into percentage purity, like say they gave you some drain cleaner and told you find out how much sodium hydroxide is in this drain cleaner. You can do that if you have an acid of a known concentration. Okay, so it's an experiment to determine the concentration of an acid or a base. So you add the acid to the base until they neutralize each other completely, okay, and an end point is reached when it's neutralization. Remember the protons from the acid and the hydroxide ions from the base. H plus plus OH minus gives you H2O. So an acid plus a base gives you a salt and water. And because some salts can be acidic or basic, we use a suitable indicator to indicate the end point. So remember the indicator is going to change color at the end point and it's your job to know which indicator to use for which concentrations. So when you look at this and the calculations and everything we need to do some revision. We know that the concentration which we call little c and we represent with square brackets. So the concentration of a solution is the amount is the quantity of the solute in moles per cubic decimeter of solution. So sometimes they ask you these definitions. So the concentration is the quantity of the solute per liter of solution and we can either write it as moles per cubic decimeter like this and sometimes we write it as big M. So if you see 0 0,1 big M it's 0 0,1 moles per cubic decimeter. So we know the concentration of the solution. We also know what's the molar mass. That's the mass of one mole of a substance and so for anything we're going to find the molar mass from the periodic table and the number of moles is given by the mass in grams, the mass that you can hold in your hand, over the mass from the periodic table. That will give you the number of moles. And remember the concentration is the number of moles per unit volume, usually cubic decimeters or liters. Remember cubic decimeter, one cubic decimeter equals one liter. So concentration is the number of moles per unit volume. And sometimes we use this formula where we put M over M, this M over M equals N, we put it in place of this N. So we can also say concentration is the mass you can hold in your hand over the mass from the periodic table and the volume. Okay, so that's formulas that you should be familiar with all the way from grade 10. So in order to titrate, we first of all need a standard solution. So the standard solution is a solution of which the concentration is exactly known and remains constant for a certain amount of time. So how do we make a standard solution? We get something, anything, that we can weigh. I actually like to use a watch glass here. You know that funny curvy bit of glass. So you get something that you can weigh the um, salt out or the solid of whatever you're using. So here's the scale and you weigh, you scoop the stuff in here until it's exactly the right mass. And remember you need two or three decimal places here. Then you dissolve this a little bit in some liquid and you pour it into the flask or if you want to you can put a funnel in the flask here and pour just the salt straight into your volumetric flask. Remember the volumetric flask has got a little line etched in it over here so when you fill it up with water you stop at the line and then you know you've got the exact volume. Okay so you have an exact mass from weighing it and the volumetric flask with a skinny little neck that you mustn't break gives you the exact volume. So you put the salt in here and you start pouring water in. When you get close to the line you add the water dropwise, one drop at a time, okay, and then you stop at the line, then you seal the bottle and you shake it and here you have a standard solution in which you put an exact weight and an exact volume of solvent and here is your standard solution. So the concentration is exactly known and it's something that doesn't degrade. There's, um, for instance, if you make a sodium hydroxide solution, sodium hydroxide solutions will not uh, have a constant concentration for a long period of time. The concentration varies because it reacts with um, air, a little bit of air in the top of the volumetric flask. It reacts with the glass of the volumetric flask, stuff like that. So only certain things usually become a standard solution. So once we've got a standard solution, sometimes you have to have dilution. You must remember with dilution, if I put seven molecules in 200 milliliters of water, okay, seven molecules of my salt or whatever, and I add more water in, 
I've still got seven molecules of my salt in my 400 moles of water. So the number of moles in, of salt in this and the number of moles of salt in that are equal. Remember, N, uh, C equals N over V. Look back here. C equals N over V. So if you want N by itself, N equals CV. Can you see that? So if we come back here, if the moles of the, in one are the same as the moles in the other, then CV, because N is equal to CV, C1V1 is going to be equal to C2V2. So concentration times volume of the undiluted is going to be equal to concentration times volume of the diluted because there were seven moles in here and there's seven moles in there. So CV1, C1V1 equals C2V2. Okay. Then once we've got our standard solution, we get the solution that we don't um, know, the acid, for instance. So except we do this the other way around in grade 12. We put the acid in the burette and the base in the Erlenmeyer flask, but not to worry. So we measure out an exact amount of acid solution using our pipette, which can only take up a certain amount. Remember, sometimes we use the pipette filler or we can suck it up with our mouth, but that's a lab precaution that you should use. So then you have your burette. You take the reading on your burette and you've got the acid in the flask underneath. Remember to add the indicator to the flask, otherwise you're in trouble. And then you take a reading here and then you start slowly, slowly adding the base to the acid here. And when you can see the indicator wants to change color, you go slowly, slowly, slowly. And then the moment the indicator changes color, you close the tap and you take a final reading. So then you know that your final um, solution is now at the end point and you can now work out by knowing this volume okay of the standard sodium hydroxide solution once you know this volume you can work out the moles because you know the concentration exactly because you that's the point of a standard solution so you turn the volume into moles and then you know what acid you've got here so you know the molar ratio and then you can work out what was my concentration of my unknown so things that you need to Remember, you have to swirl the flask all the time. If you don't swirl the flask all the time, it's very hard to um, know when the end point is. So at the start, it's colorless, 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 colorless. And then you start seeing that um, the pink color is forming as you're swirling. And then finally, at the end point, it must be the very palest pink while you're swirling and then the pink never goes away. And then if you add one more drop and it goes very dark pink, you've gone too far. Okay. Things you must consider about reading your burette, the scale's upside down. Okay. So zero is at the top. Normally zero is like at the bottom when we fill like a measuring cylinder. Zero is at the bottom. All of a sudden zero is going to be at the top. Okay, keep your eye in line with this when you want to read it. So sometimes you have to stand on the chair to look up here. You have to understand what's going on in your flask. When you fill the pipette, you can't get air bubbles in it because they change the volume. And then you need to learn how to use the stupid pipette filler before you start if you're not going to pipette by mouth. Okay, and then because this is chemistry, there's two different endpoints. There's the equivalence point and the end point, and they have two different meanings. Sometimes they're used semi-interchangeably in exam questions, but they're actually different. So the equivalence point is when the acid and the base has completely reacted, okay? So the equivalence point when the acid has completely reacted with the base, or the base has added, reacted completely with the acid, depending on what you're adding to what. But the end point is where the indicator changes color. So these two might not be exactly the same, and that's why they've got two different names, but usually, usually like sometimes they use them interchangeably, but there are two different meanings in the exam guidelines, which means you need to know the two different meanings. So now because um, when we titrate, it is absolutely exact, and we've got exactly the right number of moles of acid to exactly the right number of moles of the base, you can use this formula, okay? The concentration of the acid times the volume of the acid over the concentration of the base times the concentration of the base is equal to the number of moles of the acid over the number of moles of the base. And this is actually coming from your balanced equation, okay? 
because you know your concentration of your standard solution, you know your volume of your standard solution that you um, multiplied by, and then say you're trying to find the base, you don't know the concentration of the base, but with your pipette, you know the exact volume you pipetted up, and then you know the reaction that you're doing, so you know the number of moles from the balanced equation of the acid and the base. And then the only thing you left with is, for instance, your concentration that you have to find. So you only use this with an exact titration, and here is what everything stands for. The concentration of the acid times the volume of the acid is equal to the number of moles of the acid, the concentration of the base over the volume of the base, and the concentration of the base times the volume of the base equals the number of moles of the base, and we use the coefficients from the balanced equation. Okay, so we can use this titration formula for exact titrations, but if there's excess or somebody overshot the end point, you can't really use this in a question if they say somebody overshot the end point. So in the exam guidelines, they say to you for a titration, for example, the titration of oxalic acid with sodium hydroxide, we actually make a standard solution of oxalic acid and have an unknown solution of sodium hydroxide. So you need to know the apparatus or label the diagram. So you need to know your burette, your pipette, your Erlenmeyer flask, your indicator, your volumetric flask, all of those things. You need to say how you're going to make the solution. So you weigh the salt and then you mix it with water and then you close, carefully go up to the line in the volumetric flask. You must describe how to conduct the titration, how you can, um, for instance, add the, you must add the indicator and you can add whatever in your burette fast until you get close to the end point and then you must slow down. Safety precautions like gloves when dealing with acids, uh, glasses on your eyes to stop acid spitting into your eyes using a pipette filler so that you don't get dangerous chemicals into your mouth. How do you do ensure reliable results? You do it more than once. Um, you take three readings and take the average, stuff like that. And then you need to be able to use that titration formula, CAVA over CVBB equals NA over NB. So, or you can do the long calculation if you're not comfortable with that formula. And then you need to know which indicator you're going to use. For the titration you use, you use phenolphthalein because you have oxalic acid, which is a weak acid because it's an organic acid, and you titrate it with sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. So you're going to end up with this color change here, but in um, exam questions, they can replace some of the reactants, and then you have to know if you have to use another indicator. But at the end of the day, this, you must make sure you know what's the volumetric flask, what's the burette, what's the pipette, what's the pipette filler, what are the safety precautions, and nearly always ask you the safety precautions like that. Those are the things that you're supposed to know. Okay, and that's basically a short lecture on titration.